Greetings everyone and welcome to a video lesson where I would like to teach you how to play against flank attacks, especially when your opponent being undeveloped and starts throwing either the queen on the side of the board or the pawns, like here black just played g5, where should your attention be and how typically you punish something like that? Well, most of the time I would like you to take a look at the center. There's an old saying that flank attack is best met by counterplay in the center. Now, that doesn't mean that you just go and attack in the center right away. That means the strategy gives you direction. That's where you look at, but sometimes you need to prepare it. So in this position, the move G5, it really doesn't lead to an attack for uh, black pieces. Now, yes, he can, for example, after a castle, threaten to play and move like g4, but their pieces, especially the queen, are out of play and really not threatening to come and attack my king right away. White, in other words, has time, and that attack that black is creating needs to build up. Remember that even if they're able to, for example, achieve moves like later uh, h5 and h4 and g3 and open up the lines next to my king, pieces still need to come in from his point of view and uh, threaten my king. So the fact that my king is getting opened, that does not automatically indicate that my king is vulnerable. It's the pieces of his that need to come and create those mating nets. Now, my opponent's king, however, is left alone in the center. And if I would be able to clear the lines in the middle, I would be able to attack that king more freely. So I'm not at all worried here about castling. I do just that. And after g4, I think knight h4 would also be a fine move. Some players prefer this so that they would also block the h-pawn of opponents, which might want to march towards our king. But I chose knight to d2, and this is now preparing the pawn break e4 with the idea of clearing the lines so that I could create counterplay against my opponent's king. So they go h5, and this is not scary at all for me. Um, first of all, they don't even have the queen next to my king, and the attack is really unjustified. But the correct way of, I think, punishing that for white is exactly what white is doing here in the game with e4. White is threatening the fork, so we have pawn takes and knight takes. And again, the thing is that when you're achieving these central counterattacking moves, like for example e4, you're creating threats against which your opponent has to react, and therefore they don't have time to continue building up that attack on the side. Like for example, after I play e4, I'm threatening e5, so they cannot push uh, the pawns on the king side. After I take back with the knight, I'm threatening knight takes d6, and again they don't have time to uh, play on the side. Now, why the center? Uh, a lot of times, of course, the opponent's king might be left there, but I think that primarily re the reason is that as we are starting the game, our pawns and pieces go to the middle. So if you're opening up the lines there, uh, typically you can hit a lot of opponent's pieces because that's where they are since uh, the opening principle suggests that we should develop the uh, pieces to the center from the get-go. So my opponent played bishop b8, Perhaps they hope to create this battery and uh, checkmating threats against my king. I go bishop to g5. I think this is a very nice developing move while I'm also creating initiative with that. My opponent doesn't have time to continue building up the attack because now I'm threatening to take on f6. So once again, he has to react to uh, what I'm doing in the middle. We have queen c7. So they're threatening checkmate in one move. Um, I play g3 and defend against their threat. They play knight takes e4, knight e4. I continue putting my pieces in aggressive positions, uh, try to open up the opponent's king. I can always uh, dream of also breaks like d5 under the right circumstances to completely clear the lines to attack my opponent's king. Of course, it doesn't work right now tactically, but that will be on my mind nevertheless. So we have h4. Black is continuing to open up the lines, but Really, even if we give him an extra move after g f uh, h g three f g three, there wouldn't be a continuation that would cause uh, trouble for me. So what I do is I play pawn to c five, and you can see that Black's king is much more vulnerable. Uh, White is threatening knight to d six. I had h takes g three, and now I give this in between move knight to d six. The idea is that if they go king f eight. I could go uh, f takes g3 and threaten the f7 pawn. And instead, they sacrifice the queen, realize that there is no compensation, and after queen e2, my opponent resigned. Now, if you think this is a low-level game, um, depends on what your level is, I can just reveal that the opponent is 2300 
uh, player on um, Elichas in Rapid. So really not a bad player. Um, nevertheless, the game looked quite one-sided. Um, the biggest takeaway uh, is when they're pushing those premature attacks or premature pawn attacks on the flanks, your attention should be at the center. Once again, that doesn't mean that you attack in the center right away. Sometimes you need to make sure that it works tactically, but that's where your attention should be. And I hope that this is an instructive model game uh, that will help you in all of the future uh, situations where your opponents attack you on the flanks. If you like the lesson, consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach. My contacts are on the screen. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next.